Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at uh, indices. This is a uh, grade four topic uh, for GCSE maths. It should be fairly straightforward. Once you get the hang of the different rules, you should be good to go. Uh, please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, compare your solutions. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so this particular video is a grade four quick test on indices. It's going to take about 10-15 um, minutes or so to actually work through. There are four pages. Please do download. Have a go at each of the questions of yourself. They're worth one to two marks. They should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so the laws of indices are fairly okay in that if you've got uh, x to the five times x to the four, what we're doing is we're actually adding those indices together. Now, the reason we do that is because this is the same as x times x times x times x times x and this is the same as x times x times x times x and if you put all of those together you actually get x to the 9. Okay so we can use that same principle then with everything else in that I've got y to the 7 times y to the 2 so that's going to be y to the 9, okay? And as we work through these, you should hopefully be able to um, able to answer these questions without really performing any form of calculation. So this is going to be z to the 8, and this one is actually going to be a to the 8. Don't get confused with a to the 4 times a to the 4. It's exactly the same principle. Okay, so when we're multiplying, we add the indices. When we're dividing, what we're going to do is subtract the indices. Okay, now the answer to this particular question is going to be x to the 4. Now the reason that is, is because it's x to the 8, which is x times x times x times x times x, oh, times x, oh, what's that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, times x times x, and that's all divided by x times x times x times x, okay? And when you actually um, reduce this particular fraction, what you get left with is actually going to be x to the 4, which is this one that's left here. Okay, so that's the general principle. So all we do is subtract the indices themselves. So this one's going to be y to the 5. This one's going to be z to the 1. Now, we don't normally write z to the 1. What we do is just write z on its own. Okay, so hopefully that's all right for you. Now, the next one then is a to the 4 divided by a to the 4, which is exactly the same as a to the 4 over a to the 4, which is equal to 1, because we can divide top and bottom by a to the 4. Okay, so the next one then is going to be 3x cubed. Well, that's the same as saying 3x times 3x times 3x. So if I multiply out the numbers first, I'm going to get 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And then I've got x times x times x, which is x cubed. Okay. Uh, hopefully that's all right for you. So again, we can provide exactly the same principle with the next one where we've got 4a times 4a. Well, that's going to be 16a squared. And that would be the answer to number 10. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. So these general principles follow for all the work through indices. And this um, type of question now is getting a little bit more representative of the kind of work you might get in a GCSE. So we've got effectively 5 cubed. Well, 5 cubed is going to be equal to 125. And b cubed is going to be b cubed. OK. Uh, number 12, well, we've got 3 to the power of 4 is going to be equal to 81. C to the power of 4 is going to be C to the power of 4. OK, let's move on to the next one. And hopefully you can see here what I'm doing with each of these, that I'm just multiplying each of the terms by the index itself. So 4 to the power of 3 is going to be 64. B to the power of 3 is going to be B to the power of 3. And then D to the power of 3 is D to the power of 3. OK, so the next one then, we're still using exactly the same principle. If we look at the number first, we've got 3 cubed, which is 27. Now we've got X to the 2 multiplied by 3. Well, if you can imagine what we've done before is write X times X 
and then and we're going to do that three times so actually we end up with x to the power of six okay um, and then finally we've got y to the power of three okay let's move on to the next one then so 15 uh, let's look at the two first well that's going to be two to the power of three is going to be eight and then we've got a to the power of three to the power of three well that's going to be a to the power of nine and then we've got b to the power of two to the power of three is going to be b to the power of six okay let's move on to the next one then so we've got three to the power of three to the power of three okay so that's going to be three to the power of nine okay if it's a letter it's exactly the same as a number you treat it in exactly the same way okay so another version of doing this would be question number 17 but we're going to treat it in exactly the same way two times five is going to be ten and then we've got x to the two well we're not multiplying that by anything so we leave it as it is and then y to the four okay next one then is three to the set uh, three times seven is going to be twenty one and then we've got a to the three and b to the five and then number 19 well slightly different because we've got four times four which is fine because that's 16 and then we've got c to the five times c to the five that's going to be c to the power of 10 okay um, the same principle applies with the division as we did before in that we can actually write this as a fraction. So 25x to the 4 divided by 5x to the 2. Well, 25 and 5 can be divided through by 5. Okay, so 5 goes into 25 five times. So that's going to give me 5. And then I've got x to the 4 divided by x to the 2. Well, that's actually going to be 4 take away 2, which is x to the 2. OK, so hopefully we're all right with this. Let's move on then to some fairly similar questions. And these are all representative of the kind of questions you would get in a GCSE. So let's have a look at changing this to a fraction. 15 n to the 4 over 3 n to the 4. OK, so 3 and 5 are OK. I can divide that through by 3 and I get... Uh, top is 5m to the 4 and then the bottom is n to the 4. Can't do anything with either of those. So I can leave that as 5m to the 4 divided by n to the 4. And that's the answer to question number 21. OK, 22. So um, something to the power of x equals 1. Write down the value of x. Well, this is something that you need to know. In this particular case, x equals 0. So any number to the power of 0 equals 1. So if I wrote 42 to the power of 0, that would equal 1. Or if I wrote uh, 157 to the power of 0, that would also equal 1. OK, so it's just something that you need to know. Number 23, write 4 to the 3 times 4 to the 2 as a power of 4. Well, hopefully you're OK with these now. That would just be simply 4 to the power of 5 because we add the indices when we are multiplying them together. OK, 24. Well, let's just work that out. 4 to the 3 times 4 to the 6 is going to be 4 to the 9 divided by 4 to the 2. Well, that's going to be subtracting the index is going to be 4 to the 7. Let's have a look at the next one then. So again, same principle. We've got uh, 3 to the 6 times 3 to the minus 2. So we're going to 6 plus minus 2 is going to be equal to 3 to the 4, all divided by 3 to the 4. Again, that's going to be one exactly the same question or similar questions, the one that we did before. OK, number 26 then. Uh, it's already actually been laid out for us, so we can work that through. 16 divided by 4 is going to be 4. A to the power of 8 divided by A to the power of 3 is going to be A to the power of 5. And then we've got B to the power of 3 divided by B to the power of 1, effectively, is going to be B to the power of 2. Just a point there, if it says B on its own, it means B to the power of 1. OK, let's move on then to question number 27 and 28. So 27, we're going to divide through by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is going to equal to uh, 4. 
okay and then I've got x to the 2 divided by x to the 1 which is going to be x uh, y to the 6 divided by y to the 4 is going to be y to the 2 okay so hopefully that's fairly straightforward for you so work out the value of 2 squared to the power of 3 well effectively that's exactly the same as saying 2 to the power of 6 because 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Now, if I work that out, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And I need to just do that calculation. I'm going to get 64, which is the actual value, which is what they're looking for. They're not looking for it in index form. And you do sometimes get these sorts of questions where it says calculate the value. So that's the final section here on this final uh, worksheet. Hopefully this is OK for you. Um, so if you've got a negative index, it means the reciprocal so it's 1 over 5 to the power of 3. That's going to give you 1 over 125 because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Likewise, um, 4 to the power of minus 2 is 1 over 4 squared. That's going to give you 1 over 16. And then 6 to the power of minus 3. Well, that's 1 over 6 cubed. And that's going to give us 1 over 216. OK, very typically these are non-calculator questions. So just be very careful with all of these. Really, you should not be using a calculator with any of these. OK, so 4 squared times 2 cubed. Well, 4 squared is going to be 16. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 16 times 8 is going to give you a value of 1, 2, 8. And that will be two marks for you. Final couple of questions then. And these are fairly representative of kind of uh, grade four, uh, I guess, knocking on the door, really, of a grade five type question. All we're basically saying is that when we add the indices together, we're going to get 12. So the only way to work that is five to the four times five to the eight, because four plus eight is equal to 12. OK, therefore, x must equal eight. And that would be the answer to that question. OK, and we can apply exactly the same with the second one. That's 6 to the 9 divided by 6 to the... Well, it's actually going to be 7 because 9 take away 7 is equal to 2. So therefore, x must equal 7. So there's a little bit of arithmetic or mental arithmetic going on there with that one. OK, so very final question on this particular worksheet. Um, but we're going to treat it in exactly the same way in that we've got 4 to the power of 9 plus 5 is 14 divided by 4 to the 3 and that equals 4 to the 11. So in order for uh, 4 to the 11 to equal 4x, 4 to the power of x times 4 to the power of 4, what we're basically saying is that must be 4 to the power of 7 times 4 to the power of 4 because we add the indices together so therefore x must equal 7 and that would be the answer to the final question okay so i hope that was useful please do add a comment if you're not sure always come back to you have a look at the rest of the channel subscribe and i'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video